Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next stay. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Reading Rainbow I can go anywhere Friends to know and ways to grow Reading Rainbow I can be anything Take a look It's in That means hello and welcome in Japanese. Today we're celebrating Japan and Japanese culture. I'm here at Gasho of Japan, a restaurant in New York State. It has all the elements of an authentic Japanese country home. This beautiful, peaceful garden really gives me the feeling of being in Japan. And part of the magic of being here is the music. This is Yoko Gates, who plays the traditional Japanese koto. Yoko, can you tell us what a koto is? Well, koto belongs to the zither family, like a piano. Ah, it's actually a cousin, sort of, of the yes. piano. Yes. Uh -huh. And what's it made out of? It's made out of wood called polonia. And what are the strings made from? These are nylon. Uh-huh. And bridges are ivory. And you actually move these bridges back and forth to change the sound of the strings, huh? That's correct. And we use these picks made out of ivory. Uh, for example, we use forward or the backwards. Ah, so you get a different sound from the way you use the picks as well. Yes. Could you play another song for us? It sounds so beautiful. Certainly. One of the most enjoyable parts of Japanese culture is the food. In Japan, lunch is not only delicious, it's beautiful. Mr. Yabafuchi is an expert Japanese chef who can transform a common garden variety onion into an exquisite chrysanthemum. Right now, 
He's turning an ordinary white radish into a rare and special bird, a Japanese crane. In Japan, cranes are big, beautiful white birds believed to bring long life and good health. Mr. Yabafuchi carves beautiful gardens filled with flowers and animals. He makes them from all kinds of different vegetables. Onions, carrots and cucumbers, and big white radishes. I'm sure this crane will bring me much good fortune. A Japanese crane is a very special gift, and there are many stories about the good luck that it brings. Here's one about a crane made from a simple piece of paper that has the power to change people's lives. It's called the paper crane. The Paper Crane by Molly Bang Read by Key Luke A man once owned a restaurant on a busy road. He loved to cook good food and he loved to serve it. He worked from morning until night, and he was happy. But a new highway was built close by. Travelers drove straight from one place to another and no longer stopped at the restaurant. Many days went by when no guests came at all. The man became very poor and had nothing to do but dust and polish his empty plates and tables. One evening, a stranger came into the restaurant. His clothes were old and worn, but he had an unusual gentle manner. Though he said he had no money to pay for food, the owner invited him to sit down. He cooked the best meal he could make and served him like a king. When the stranger had finished, he said to his host, I cannot pay you with money, but I would like to thank you in my own way. He picked up a paper napkin from the table and folded it into the shape of a crane. You have only to clap your hands, he said, and this bird will come to life and dance for you. Take it and enjoy it while it is with you. It happened just as the stranger had said. The owner had only to clap his hands, and the paper crane became a living bird, flew down to the floor, and danced. Soon word of the dancing crane spread, and people came from far and near to see the magic bird perform.
The owner was happy again, for his restaurant was always full of guests. He cooked and served, and had company from morning until night. The weeks passed, and the months. One evening, a man came into the restaurant. His clothes were old and worn, but he had an unusual gentle manner. The owner knew him at once and was overjoyed. The stranger, however, said nothing. He took a flute from his pocket, raised it to his lips, and began to play. A crane flew down from its place on the shelf and danced as it had never danced before. The stranger finished playing, lowered the flute from his lips, and returned it to his pocket. He climbed on the back of the crane, and they flew out of the door and away. The restaurant still stands by the side of the road, and guests still come to eat the good food and hear the story of the gentle stranger and the magic crane made from a paper napkin. But neither the stranger nor the dancing crane has ever been seen again. There was a lot of magic in that paper crane. Probably in this one, too. And here are some other magical-looking creatures. Take a look at this yellow butterfly. Almost looks real, doesn't it? Look at how his wings work. Recognize this guy? It's a dog. He's got lots of folds. There's even a special fold for his tail. How about this sailboat? Ready to sail the seven seas. Now, each was made without one drop of glue or a single snipper tear. How do you transform? a single sheet of paper into beautiful works of art like these? Origami, the Japanese art of folding paper. I'd try some origami myself. 
It's a bookmark shaped like a leaf. See? The stem shows you your place. If you would like to try some origami, this book can show you how. It's called Easy Origami by Dokute Nakano. You might want to ask for some help with the directions. You know, one of the secrets of origami is starting with a beautiful piece of paper. And I know someone whose secret to beautiful paper is an old pair of blue jeans. You think I'm kidding? Watch this. Hi, I'm Lynn Forgatch, and I'm a paper artist at a studio called Exeter Press in New York City, where we make handmade paper out of a lot of materials. Today, we're making handmade paper out of blue jeans. And in order to start the process, we take a pair of old blue jeans, and we cut it up into small pieces. Then, we cut those pieces into smaller bits like this. Now that they're this small, we can start making some beautiful handmade paper. This piece of equipment is called a Hollander beater. And what it will do is reduce the fiber of our jeans into very, very small fibers. Looks like the beating process might be done. Let's take a look at the pulp. Oh, yes. You can see what tiny fibers have been created. Remember the piece of jeans that we started off with? It's now ready for making sheets of paper. Come on and let's make some. I've just put the pulp from the beater into this vat of water where we're going to be making our first sheet. Before I form a sheet, I have to charge the vat by stirring the fibers in the water. Then I'm going to put the mold in deckle and form a sheet. You might notice this shake. Actually, I'm reweaving the fibers, just like the jean was originally. These felts are used for the paper to be cooched or transferred onto and help absorb the water. To have some fun with color, we can add pigment to pulp, put it into squeeze bottles, and paint with it. The sheets of handmade paper that we just did are now put in this old screw book press. What I'm going to do is press it as hard as I can. You'll see the water coming out. Here are the sheets of paper that I just took out of the book press. Although it's still quite wet, you can see there's a lot of strength. After it's dried for several weeks, the finished sheet might look something like this. I love working with handmade paper. You can take a simple plant fiber like cotton and transform it into a beautiful work of art. Blue jeans to paper. Now that's a pretty magical transformation. Paper can be made out of some interesting things. It can also be made into some interesting things, like books. So if you like the paper crane, then here are some other books I'm sure you'll enjoy. Demo Shinji Nakutemo i Desio. Can you imagine what it would be like if we didn't have paper? How could you write a letter to a friend? Would books be made out of wood or stone? Well, I just read a book that told me how paper was invented. The book is called Paper Through the Ages. Before paper was invented, people used to paint on their cave walls. The Egyptians invented papyrus, a sort of paper made from plants. But it was stiff and it smelled bad. In the year 105, the Chinese invented paper. They made it out of mushy wood strips called pulp. 
The Japanese made lots of different things from paper, like houses, lanterns, windows, and even coats. There's a lot of great information and history in this book, and even a mystery trick that you can learn at the end. So take it from me, Kenneth Michael Benbow Blake. This is a great book to read, so pick it up at your local library now. Hi, I'm Liza. I like folk stories with beautiful illustrations and interesting characters. I just read a book that has both. It's called Perfect Crane by Anne Lawrence. This is a Japanese legend about a magician named Gami. Gami is very lonely because he has no friends. He makes origami animals and flowers to keep him company. One day, he makes a beautiful white paper crane. And then he brings the crane to life. This story has a happy ending about making friends and keeping them. You know, according to the Japanese, cranes are supposed to bring happiness and good luck. So improve your luck and get this book. Which of these would you normally eat with? Chopsticks or utensils? Well, some people can eat with both, like the little girl in this book, How My Parents Learned to Eat. This story is about an American sailor who meets a Japanese girl. They like each other, but they can't eat dinner together because he can't use chopsticks and she can't use forks, knives, and spoons. So the American sailor goes to a Japanese restaurant to learn how to use chopsticks. Finally, he asks the girl to dinner. There's a funny ending, but you can read that for yourself. I like this book because the girl's parents come from two different countries. So do mine. It's neat because you get the best of both worlds. I, David Chopin, advise you to go to your local library and check out How My Parents Learned to Eat. The garden here at Gasho of Japan is about to undergo its own magical transformation. And the magic? Music. This is So Daiko, the Japanese festival drummers. Members of Sodaiko play taiko, Japanese festival drums. They also create sound with conch shells, bells, and bamboo flutes. When Sodaiko plays, its members whoop and whirl, blending movement and rhythm to create music that is exciting to listen to and to watch.
Blue jeans to paper, paper to crane, tranquil garden to Japanese festival. Magical transformations. <laughs> Keep life full of surprises. Dewa, mata konutsugi ni oyashimashou. Today's Reading Rainbow books are The Paper Crane by Molly Bang, published by Green Willow Books. Paper Through the Ages by Sharon Costner. Pictures by Priscilla Kedrowski, published by Carol Rota Books, Incorporated. Perfect Crane by Anne Lauren, illustrated by Charles Mikalekuk, published by Harper and Row. How My Parents Learned to Eat by Ina Friedman, illustrated by Alan Say, published by Houghton Mifflin Company. Easy Origami by Dakute Nakano, translated by Eric Kenway, published by Viking Kestrel. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton. In uncertain times, there's no more effective way to make your kids feel good and safe than to spend time with them. We at Reading Rainbow suggest sharing a book with your family. Read for fun, read for family, Read for our future. Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, offering a family-friendly atmosphere and the Read It and Return Lending Library, where you can borrow a book and return it on your next day. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. PBS!